All right, let's get started with this uh, rocket that's built from multiple different Estes rocket kits. This flight will be on a Estes D-12-5. So it didn't go as high as it did on the E-11 that we saw in one of my previous videos, but it was still pretty cool. So here's the Cherokee E, but with uh, different fins. We're about to see it fly on a Quest D20 Q-Jet. And it was a good flight. Uh, I did not have the altimeter on board uh, like I did last time. Okay, so here we go with the rocket kit from uh, Sunward, flying on an Estes B66. So this red and white rocket here is very similar in size to the rocket we just saw and the uh, Quest Astro rocket. It's launching on a B6-6. So one of the interesting things that I've noticed recently with flying my Quest Astra and other rockets that are about the same size and weight as the Quest Astra is that uh, my Jolly Logic Altimeter 2 and Jolly Logic Altimeter 3 were telling me that the four second delays on the, the B motors I was using was too short, or in other words, that the uh, streamer was ejecting before Apogee. And what's really interesting is I've flown rockets of this size for an extremely long time on B motors, and I never really thought that the four second delay was too short, but uh, the altimeters were telling me that it was. So um, the next part of this video, we're gonna look at this uh, situation in two different ways. The first thing we're going to look at is the uh, plots from the Jolly Logic Altimeter 3 from the uh, blue and white rocket, the Sunward kit. And then we're going to actually look at the video of uh, the actual flight for comparison of uh, the red and white rocket. So the plot on the left is with the four second delay and the plot on the right is with the six second delay. And the difference between these two is the blue dot, which represents ejection of the streamer. And so the plot on the left with the four second delay, you can see the blue dot is on the left side of the peak. And on the plot on the right side with the six second delay, you can see that the blue dot that represents ejection of the streamer is on the right side of the peak. But, uh, Interestingly enough, both flights, on both flights, the rocket reached a similar altitude and uh, the data from both flights looks more or less the same other than when the streamer ejected, which probably means the rocket was going pretty slow when the streamer uh, ejected with the four second delay. So we're about to see in this video of the red and white rocket on a B4-4 that the rocket is still coasting upward when the streamer ejects. It's not happening that fast, but uh, it still looks like it's going upward. Look at it go. 
Now in this video on the B6-6 of the same rocket, we can see that it is clearly uh, starting to come down, or at least the video uh, makes it look like it's clearly coming down. Sometimes it's hard to tell with the uh, angles when you're uh, you know, viewing the rocket coming down from below, but I think that it's showing here that the rocket is in fact coming down uh, when that streamer ejects. And uh, that correlates well with the altimeter data. And here is a uh, summary of uh, all the data from all three rockets on the B motor flights. Uh, I don't have a flight of the uh, Astro with data with the B6-6, but uh, you can still see with the uh, Dash 4 motor that it was uh, ejecting before Apogee according to the uh, Jolly Logic altimeter too. And here comes the baby Bertha ready to weather cock straight into the wind on a C-6-5. Now let's do the baby Bertha again on a uh, B-4-4. Okay, baby Bertha on the B4-4. Turned in an excellent flight. None of the fins are broken. Excellent, good launch. Here we have the Goblin flying on a Estes C11-3. It was a very quick takeoff. Uh, I like this motor for this rocket. Uh, it didn't go nearly as high as the D12, but still seemed very powerful when it took off. Oh, here we go. We have some broken fins. This is what happens a lot of times when you use the streamer on the Goblin. It really needs a parachute, but hey, it did land in the field and I did get it back. And uh, those fins can be repaired. If you haven't already, make sure that you check out my video on how to glue uh, the fins back on the rocket. And uh, I'll put the link for that in the description. It's a really good video that uh, talks about why the fins break off and uh, how to fix them. Here's a rocket with Cherokee E fins and it's flying on a C-5-3. Excellent. Right. The fins are all still on there. Got away with using the streamer. Awesome. And now it's time for another rocket. Uh, made from parts from an Estes kit. Uh, this is the first flight of this rocket and it's going up on an Estes C5-3.
So this next rocket should be familiar to subscribers of my channel because the last time I launched it, uh, you couldn't really tell much in the video, but uh, I flew it on the C6-3 and it basically barely flew. It was severely underpowered. So this flight is going to be on the C5-3. So I have to say the C-53 worked. What a great flight and a close landing. And now it's time for the Cherokee E and it is flying on a C-11-3. No drift. No drift at all, hardly. Beautiful. <laughs> right next to all my stuff. Doesn't get better than that. Wow, phenomenal flight. Here it is. Very short walk for the Cherokee E. On the C11 3. Great, great flight. Very excellent flight. I'm excited about that. All right, here we go with the Olympus. Uh, better get it off quick because uh, starting to lose light. The sun's about to go down. I was flying on a D12 5. All right, so I would consider this to be a stuck landing. The rocket is standing on its fins and the top of the body tube is not touching the ground. It is leaning over a little bit, not sure how many degrees. It's not standing as straight up as uh, one of the other times I launched, but man, this is fantastic. What a great flight. I'm so excited. Uh, just an awesome, awesome launch and recovery and great conditions out here today.